butt stocks between the two models are very similar. With the exception, the butt plates, the metal butt plates are not interchangeable. You can get a shot there of the K31 stock has more of a uh, C shape to it than this K11 stock, the butt. The length of pull is very similar, although the K31 stock is slightly longer, about a quarter of an inch, maybe a little bit less. If we look over the top of the receivers, K31 has a longer receiver, or a shorter receiver than the K11 on the right. K11 has a wraparound handguard that protects uh, this part behind the rear sight. K11 does not, or K31 does not. Um, <clears throat> I find the K31 to not have a wraparound handguard a little bit better as uh, it's less likely to break or crack while taking this off. It makes this much uh, easier to crack and break. The barrels are even end to end here, and as we can see, the K31 has a longer sight radius by uh, an inch or more. The sights for the K31 start at 100. Sights for the K31 start at 100 meters up to 1500. For the K11 starts at 300 meters to 1500 meters. The front sling swivels look to be the same as do the uh, bayonet attachments look to be the same, although I'm not sure if they're interchangeable. We look where the magazines are positioned. You can see that the K31 here, the magazine is much closer to the trigger guard than on the K11. Um, there's a lot of wasted space here. You can, I can almost fit my whole hand in there. Uh, none wasted here. And this is because of the longer receiver on the K11. On the top is a K31 magazine, and below that is a K11 magazine. Why the K11 magazine was not retained, I don't know. It's kind of uh, wasteful, in my opinion, why they didn't keep the K30, uh, K11 magazine. But they're a very similar in profile. This is a stamped piece follower. And this is a milled follower on the K11. Um, both have similar attachments. On the other side, has a cutout here. And this one also cut out. On the bottom of the K11 magazine, it is ribbed for reinforcement. On the K31 magazine, it is not. Uh, this K31 magazine is not matching. It's a much later magazine. Also, I want to point in the differences on the front sight. The K31's winged front sight is going in. The K11 is going out in a V. This is going in. My camera doesn't seem to want to focus, but... There we go. As for the slings, they are both the same. This is a, uh, looks to be a much newer K31 sling, but this is the one that came with my rifle. Uh, this is a surgical repair that I had to do to, uh, on the keeper. But this sling is number matched to the rifle. Someone carved in their, the rifle serial number onto the sling. Here are the bolts. As we can see, the K11 bolt is much longer and before it comes down to the locking lugs. 
locking lugs on the K31. We line them up like that. It's a little bit difference in length. The K31 uh, also has a different bolt knob. Um, the bolt knob on the K11 seems to be made out of some kind of rubber or plastic. And I believe the K31 is made out of aluminum, although I'm not sure. Now I'll show you the bolts disassembled. To the right of this K11 bolt knob is K31 bolt parts, and this is K11 bolt parts here. So K31, K11, you can see the striker and the K11 is much longer than the K31. The Main springs are uh, different diameter and different length. The K31 is longer and skinnier. The bolts themselves are uh, much different looking. Um, K11 has a much uh, longer, uh, bigger locking service on the bolts than the uh, K31 here on the left. Um, the extractor on the K31, uh, similar in design, but is uh, actually inside the body instead of outside of the body. Um, bolt charging handles. I believe this is a milled steel for the K31, although I could be stamped. I'm not sure, wouldn't be surprised if that was stamped, but uh, a track here, uh, actually K11 has a track in it. Overall, I do find the uh, actions on both of these rifles to be very smooth, and I, it would be hard for me to say which is smoother. Maybe the K31 is just a little bit smoother, I would say, although uh, they're both very smooth. And, I'm very impressed with both of them when you compare them to other straight pull rifles. Also wanted to say as far as assembling and disassembling the bolts, uh, they're both quite easy to do. Although I do find the K, uh, K11 bolt to be easier to put back together than the uh, K11, K31 bolt. I keep getting them mixed up, but I don't know why, but I... It seems like I have problems getting the uh, K31 bolt back together. Um, um, it just seems just a little bit more complicated with how it locks up and it's interrupted kind of lock. I don't know how to correctly state that, but it seems to be just a little bit more difficult for me to assemble. Well, it did, but I have it down now. As far as... Um, if you have no idea how to uh, take these bolts apart and put them back together again, you're going to have a very hard time at assembling these. Uh, disassembly can probably be easy, but putting them back together, if you have no idea, will be very hard. Uh, unless you're very smart. Also want to point out that both the uh, stocks Pistol grips are very similar. They're uh, very much like a Lee Enfield pattern style. As far as bayonets go, to my knowledge, all K11 bolts or uh, bayonets will fit on a K31. And the barrel diameter, as you can see, is slightly skinnier than the K31. Uh, K11 also has this stocking up uh, aluminum piece here. Where the K31 didn't, I guess they solved their stocking issues when they moved to the newer K31. Thank you for watching. I uh, love my rifles. Both of them have Swiss tags on them, uh, Swiss troop tags. This one belonged to a German sounding fellow. Uh, at least his name was German sounding. And this one belonged to a French sounding fellow. His name was Henry. H-E-N-R-I, 
uh, something. And this one belonged to a Johann Steitler. Thank you.